Okay, this should represent our last discussion in section 2.1. So we're going to look at real world type scenarios or um, tra general translations in, from a world, real world scenario. So our first example, example 5, John makes $9 per hour. How much pay does John earn if he works? three hours or seven hours. Well, nine dollars per hour, per is another way of my writing multiplication. So what we see over here is that we have nine times three, which is going to give us 27. So I'm going to put in the dollar sign because it does have a real world meaning. So we have $27 and that's John's pay if he works not uh, three hours. Now John's pay if he works seven hours, that would be $9 per the seven hours and that's going to give us $63 instead of the 27. So what we're seeing here is that there is a functional relationship between John's pay and the number of hours that he works. So our next example, number six, is going to show us how we could write a mathematical expression to show what's going on in each of these examples so that no matter how many hours variable hours that John works, then we can find out how much money he's going to make. So the, I've written out the basics here in essence of time. The first thing I wrote out was that his pay was so many dollars per hour. Well, his pay is nine dollars per hour. The slash like this, we read per hour. And then number of hours, well the number of hours is what we don't know. That's the thing that's changing. So we're going to write that as the variable x. So the number of hours is x. And then his total pay, well how did we figure his total pay out up here? Well that's what we want to write down here. So what we're going to write down here is that it's going to be equal to, and we're going to write this in words first. So we're going to write his pay and that was the 9, and then we multiplied pay by the number of hours up there when we were doing example number 5. And so that's how we were finding out what John's total pay was, so that's how we're going to do it here. I want you to get used to writing these things in words as well as in mathematical expressions. Now we're going to fill in by substitution the pay, which is 9, and John's number of hours, which equals 9x. And that's everything that I want you to show to me. And now we have a mathematical expression, or an algebraic expression actually, for John's total pay. So now we're going to go on and we're going to do this in a tabular form. And this is just a way of showing a bunch of different hours and pays. So we're going to have a table of values for the number of hours that John's works and the um, the amount of pay he's going to earn. So these are our independent variable, which we've said we're going to be equal to h over here, and then his total pay, which is the output. So we have input is number of hours and output is the total pay. That's that same relationship that we saw before is 9x, and I'll write it here as 9h because it's 9 times the number of hours. x we used before, now we're going to write h for that. So here, this total pay would be 1 times the 9, or 9 times 1 like we wrote it before. But remember, it's commutative, so it doesn't matter. So 1 times 9 gives us 9 here. And total pay, of course, is in dollars. And if we write that up here, we don't have to write it each and every time down here. So here we have the 3 hours that he works times his 9 um, dollars per hour and that gives us twenty seven dollars in pay and then here he has seven hours that he works times the nine dollars per hour and that's the sixty three and the beautiful thing about this kind of a table is it shows us this functional relationship here's our input values over here so we have input here and then what we have is the output over here. And so input output are relate, related to one another through this mathematical expression that we um, it came up with in example number six. Nine times the number of hours, or nine h. So if we put in h, then we get out the total pay. And remember this nine h does represent your total pay. And that's how all these things get linked together. And um, what we're going to see. And so that concludes chapter 2.1.